Hello and welcome to this next installment of the game development series. I'm AD Burrows for CG Masters and here's a basic block out and prototype of the essence of the arcade survival horror game that I'm working on. If you're new to it then basically it's kind of 3D Pac-Man with no power pills and one main stalking enemy but we'll see the specifics shortly. To download it from the site you'll find a link on the page with this video somewhere. So here in this video, we'll break down some of the things going on in the file and we'll look at how to use existing CG Masters resources to get quickly set up with a first person perspective camera and HUD setup that includes an object pickup with point system. So let's get stuck in. So opening up the file, we'll see in the text editor some helpful info here, giving some gameplay instructions and tips. Uh, the 3D view is open and we're looking from the gameplay camera. We can also see the logic editors open. I'll try and go through some of the most relevant and potentially instructive aspects of the file, but if there's something you'd like to know, please comment it up for me and I'll take a look for you. So here's a quick look at the level before we launch. If I just go from the top view, we've got three main areas. An underpass which is this area here and we've got two main outdoor areas divided by this large road and a bridge that runs across the level so let's launch the game I'm just gonna go back into the camera view with zero on the numpad and then uh, we can press P so after we press P we can see on the screen now we get this text which is collect the bags and if you see red then run the enemy is faster than you so uh, straight ahead, you can kind of see a bag on the floor and you can see after the text is gone, the only text that remains is the HUD display in the top left, which is our score. And we've got zero of 20. So if I just collide with this, you can see that that bag is no longer there. And we've basically got one out of 20. And then if looking behind me, uh, there's another bag. And now we're in the external area. So this is the um, underpass area. And note that obviously there's a lot of holes in the world and things like that because this is a very, very basic block out. But um, essentially, you know, it's playable. Um, the green stuff here, that's just a, a way to mark the fact that this is the exterior and perimeter of the map. I'll probably do some art type thing there to just block that off. Um, and uh, but anyway as you kind of roam around we can collect some more and then you can see some red there I don't know if you, ah, you can sort of see there's a little bit of red going over there so that's the enemy is just going about its business looking for me so uh, at the moment we know that this sort of area is fairly safe so I'm just going to kind of go around a little bit but um, yeah basically we just need to uh, collect all the ah. <clears throat> now this means this is kind of a cheat in a way uh, because I have visualized the path that the enemy is taking so and we can see it's getting redder and ready now so let's get out of the way um, so we can actually switch that off if we don't want to have that kind of cheat on but um, I'll just sort of mention that again in a second but if I just escape out of that uh, that's the basic game if you don't mind please download and play it too uh, that'd be great because and uh, please give me some feedback on whether you think it is it is too hard or too easy or too big or too small or over too quickly or takes too long or anything else that comes to mind uh, but most important, I guess, is, is it fun? Is it simple enough to understand what to do? And if you do think it's too easy, and I have actually toned it down a little because initially I think it pro was probably too hard, try unchecking the option here. So let's just try and find that. If I just press Z to toggle out of the shaded view there, uh, the textured view, and find the enemy, uh, which is by at the start of the level is somewhere under the bridge here. So that's the enemy. And then if we take a look at the logic bricks, try on checking that, this visual navigation of the enemy. That way it's not so obvious where it's headed and you might find it a little bit trickier. This is probably something that you won't actually get in the end version of the game. So uh, it might be worth toggling that. Here's another scene that is very basic. And let's use this to take a look at going from just some simple geometry to having some working game logic to play with. Basically, this is a file that has some basic geometry, but doesn't yet have a hood or the uh, first person camera uh, set up. Uh, there is some logic in here already to do with the enemy, but I'll uh, actually come to that next week. So for the first person camera and HUD setup, thankfully Chris at CG Masters has already covered that and you can check out that blend file and tutorial here. So here I am on the cgmasters.net homepage and if we go over to the free tutorial section and find the FPS tutorial, this should have everything in it that we need. 
Uh, this goes into some detail about the process. This is a really great tutorial, uh, but really we just want to pillage the resources here at the bottom uh, where we can find a link to the finished blend file. Now I've obviously already got that downloaded and I have this open already here. And if I just go shift space on the main 3D view there, just to make that full screen and then press P to play the game. And you can see there, we can now get some uh, hood information and we get this little environment here and we can come around and we can sort of start picking up these ammo boxes here. And uh, you can see that's one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one's over here. And there you go. Uh, as you can see, I'm really very, very good at games. So that was over in quite a flash. Uh, so uh, as you can see here, just analyzing it just a second, uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a bobbing as we walk along there. Uh, there's also a control key, which we can use to kind of go into crouch mode, but we don't necessarily need that for our purposes. In any case, uh, it's a fun little example of the, uh, the stuff that we need. So I'm just gonna press escape to exit out of that and then come back to that other file. So to go from this very, very basic file, I'm gonna to need to go to append from Chris's file. So I'm just gonna to go to file and then append and I'm actually already in that file, but you can see here, I've just navigated to the blend file, demo level underscore final is what it's called. So uh, click on that and then find the object and the two objects we want is the camera and the cube. So I'm just gonna link them in and you can see they're over there. So uh, let's just give them a little space. Uh, press G and then I'm going to hit shift Z to just lock it so it doesn't move on the Z axis and then just come over to here press zero on the numpad to take a look through and then press P and see what happens and you can see we can now actually walk around and we're getting somewhere but there are a few things that I want to tweak and you can see also that the ammo has come through of course the hood as well uh, so uh, as I say yeah there are some things that I would like to tweak with this so um, let's just take a look at what some of those are so first of all I'm going to change kind of how this is displayed uh, if I go alt Z to switch to textured view we can see that it's all a bit on the white side um, and so as a few settings that I'll change one is the in the property sidebar I'm going to switch this to GLSL and that's gone all very dark now. So I'm going to uh, actually one thing that we can do is switch on the mist. So if we just find our mist settings here, so I'm just going to switch that on and you can see that kind of helps to visualize a few things, kind of gives the things an automatic light. So if I press P again now, uh, you can see things are kind of showing up a little bit better. I think I'm just going to enhance that a little bit by adding in a lamp though. Um, so if we just go shift A and then add in a uh, sun lamp, hit double R there to trackball, rotate that off to the side there a little bit to take a look at the strength and then press alt Z again from the camera. Um, let's maybe turn that down a little bit, just give it a little bit of something, uh, press P and then that might be good enough for now just so that we can see what's going on so we're not sort of stumbling through darkness. The next thing I'll take a look at if I press P again to play the game is the animation of the bobbing uh, in the walk, uh, the going up and down of the camera doesn't seem like it's particularly noticeable. Uh, it's probably happening quite slowly and so it doesn't seem like there's much urgency in the step so i'm just going to change something here by coming over to the render tab of the properties window and you can see we need, do need to be in blender game for all this to be working of course to be able to see some of these settings and the animation frame rate here which is 24 at the moment i'm just going to set that to 60 and now when i press play uh, you can see we're getting a little bit more of that bobbing up and down motion going on uh, which is a little bit more like what I, i'm looking for Oh, also before I forget, I kind of glossed over the mist setting perhaps a bit, little bit too quickly. But uh, with this, you can set your horizon color here and this, the fall off uh, settings I've got it to, are uh, it's starting at two units and then I've got 50 is the depth that I'm using at the moment. So the next thing I'd like to take a look at is if I press uh, play, we've got ammo up there and we're not really going to use ammo. So um, what we're going to need to do is change that to the word score instead. So I'm just going to come over to the HUD scene by switching the scene at the top there. And you can see we've got this word over here, ammo. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode and then just set that to score. And now when we switch back to the scene and press play, we can see it's now saying score. 
The next thing I'd like to change is the height of the camera. Because I'm using a scale that one blender unit is equal to one meter, if we take a look from the side view, um, this is about five meters high at the moment. And you can see that this grid is set to four uh, meter grid spacings. So you can see that's about five and uh, that's a little bit high. So if we kind of raise that, lower that down, uh, that's not really going to help things because, you know, it's going to jump straight away again um, after, uh, as it's basically just going to play the animation. So I'm going to open up the graph editor so that we can tweak the keyframes on this. So I'm just going to go to press home just to zoom in on that. In fact, if I just switch these two off, we can really zoom right in. Uh, so we can see what we're doing. And uh, for this, I guess I'm going to, spread, going to press G and then Y. And then I'm just going to move these down. Uh, maybe give myself a little bit more space there, actually. Move it much lower down. So I don't want a massive five meter tall person, uh, but around about two meters might be about right. So maybe something like that. So let's take a look at what happens now when we play. Press play. So yeah, we're a bit lower down, but maybe the bobbing up and down is maybe happening a little bit too enthusiastically. So uh, let's just change the distance between those keyframes. So I'm just, just going to raise this lower one. So basically, as I'm walking, I'm obviously lowering myself about 30 centimeters. What is that? That's 30, 40 centimeters, so nearly half a meter. Uh, let's just move that up a little bit to about, say, something like that. See if that's quite good, because often you want to exaggerate stuff in games anyway, just to really give you that sense. So that maybe is about right. Yeah, let's just keep it at that for now. The next thing I'd like to do is to just change how fast the player is moving around. As you can see here, we can go when I'm pressing W, A, S and D. This is kind of quite fast, a real run speed. And I kind of want it to be a little bit more sedate than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over to its logic and you can see here <clears throat> with the cube selected, we get this W, A, S and D in the logic editor, and that's plugged into these uh, motion actuators. And what I'm going to do is just change these to about half of what was there already. So just to 1.5. Strafe right. 1.5. And then let's take a look at that now. Play. And now we get this kind of thing. So it looks a little bit more like maybe hurried walking, sort of a little bit cautious, but a little bit nervous at the same time. So the next thing I'd like to do is just to set up the pickups, the thing that is going to be generating our points for us, which is these trash bags. And I've already got it in the scene, or at least one instance of it in the scene. So I'm just going to press G and then Shift Z just to move it over closer to the player cube here. Let's press zero on the numpad to just take a look at how close that exactly is. Maybe a little bit further away like that. So let's take a look, press P and then we can move over to this and then uh, not a lot is happening right now but that is despite the fact that this trash bag has already got a little bit of game logic on it already which is the fact that we're listening for some collision so when it collides it's going to end itself and then award a point but neither of those two things are happening at the moment and that's because we're listening for the player property it's not just going to trigger this when it collides with anything so for example the enemy we don't want the enemy to generate us points and stuff so we're just listening for the player and if we actually go over to the cube we can see that there are no game properties here so let's just add one and call it the player and then now try that again press uh, P and let's see what happens and now it's at least disappeared so we know one part of this is working the end object is bit is working and the other part is that it's sending a message called point but that isn't having any uh, change to our score in the top left that you can see there nothing's happening so let's take a look at why that might be let's go over to our hood and then select the zero which is our text object here and you can see the logic here is that it's listening for the message ammo and not point and when that happens it's going to add one to the property the, to the text property so let's take a look back at our scene again now press p and then let's see what happens now now we get a score of one and it gets ended so that's working fine and now what we can do is press g and then move that to the left maybe duplicate it once duplicate it another time and now let's see what happens now press p 
hopefully we can get to one, two. And now because I'm pretty slick at maths, I think we can hit three. Yeah. OK, so that's now working. The next thing to concern ourselves with is some kind of wind condition. So let's go back over to the hood and take a look at this zero. And basically, when the property is at um, the text property, that is, is 20, um, which is what I've got in the blockout version of the game. But let's just call that three for now. But when that happens, we want to just restart the scene because we have won, basically. So let's say what happens now. Once we go back to the scene and just pick these guys up. So we got one, two, and then three. And you can see it's reset. It's reset the score at least, but we're still over here and nothing else is reset really. The trash bags are completely gone still. So what we need to do is we need to reset the scene here as well in this scene. So what we'll do is not only will we restart the scene when we hit three, we're also going to send a message and we're going to sound it loud and clear. And that is going to be to the cube, which is the player cube. And the subject is going to be win. And it's time for celebrations. So let's now go back over to the scene and then listen for that. Uh, let's listen for the message win. And when that happens, what we're going to do is the same kind of thing. It's just restart our scene. So let's hook those two up. And let's see if that is now working. So let's uh, press P and then let's get through this thing. One, two, and then three. And then that's it. It's restarted. The score is restarted and everything as is as it should be. One last thing I wanted to just really add in just at the end here is the fact that in the actual main download file that you'll get be able to get, um, there are actually extra things in here in the text blocks of the uh, the text editor. You, you should be able to find that there's one called how the game works. And that's kind of instructive in, in how it's set up. This, for example, includes some stuff about how the enemy AI is set up as well. So uh, as I say, I'll return back to that next week. But there are some additional information in here and some tips, as I say, to uh, help with playing the game and to kind of understand what's happening a little bit in, in a different context there. But hopefully you can squeeze some enjoyment out of it and please feedback any information, any feelings you have about it. It's obviously very, very rough and ready. And I feel like um, this is pretty much going to be massively enhanced by the right kind of atmosphere and sound and visuals and kind of that kind of thing. But I'm still hoping that the core of this, the very, very stripped down aspects of uh, what you're going to be able to play here is still it still has some merit of some kind, basically. Uh, it would be kind of tragic to continue with a game which is just bloody awful, basically. So uh, hopefully that's something that you won't experience and it'll be actually fun to play. So uh, until next time, bye for now.